MQTT is a messaging protocol used by IoT devices, and it opens up a lot of possibilities for Home Assistant. Now, it doesn't need any additional hardware because it can take advantage of your existing computer network, but it does require a broker, something which is going to basically act as a post office for all of the messages being exchanged. Now, fortunately, Home Assistant does actually come supplied with an MQTT broker add-on, but how do you install that software and configure it? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, because that's what we'll be going over. Now, the first thing to do is to install the MQTT broker add-on. Now, I'm running the latest version of Home Assistant as of the time of recording, and the layout has actually changed uh, fairly recently, but it hasn't changed that much. So in my case, instead of clicking on configuration, for instance, I'm going to click on settings, and then I'm going to go to add-ons. Then down here, I'm going to click on add-on store. And then what we're interested in is this Mosquito Broker, an open source MQTT broker. So we'll click on that. And then what I'm going to do is just click on install, and then off it'll go and install the actual software. And once that's installed, I'll bring you back. Well, the add-on's now installed, so it's a matter of configuring the broker before we actually start it. So here on the main page, by default, it's set to start on boost, so that's good. But we do want to enable the watchdog feature. Uh, that way, if the software were to crash for whatever reason, Home Assistant will try and restart it again. Now, on the configuration tab, I'm not going to make any changes. I mean, I would like to enable the option uh, for SSL TLS certificates to give me encryption. I mean, that's something the actual developer of MQTT strongly recommends. The only problem I'm finding is that there are certain projects out there, for instance, that don't support this, in which case there's no point me enabling the feature if I can't use it anyway. When it comes to the logins, you can actually create users within Home Assistant set itself and actually take advantage of those rather than putting them in here. And that to me makes more sense having a, a central storage for your users than having each individual add-on having its own users, basically. I mean, there are other options you can change, for instance, the ports, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm just going to leave these all at the default settings. So we'll go back to the Info tab, and then we'll click on the Start button, and that'll start the actual software. Now, there is some additional software to still install on Home Assistant, but before I do that, I'm going to create a user account because I don't like to use default accounts or built-in accounts. So I'm going to click Settings, then I'm going to click People, then Add Person. I'm going to give this a, a name that I can recognize it by. You can use something different if you like. And I need to select this option, Allow Person to Log In, because they need to be able to log in to Home Assistant. I'm going to change the username. Again, you can use something different uh, to what I'm using. I would suggest using something a lot stronger, more complicated than what I'm using for the password. And I would suggest actually selecting our option as well, can only log in from the local network. Uh, we don't need admin rights to Home Assistant, but we do need this um, account to be able to log in to Home Assistant, but only from the local network. I mean, it's a it's a bad practice to actually allow direct access to your internal computers from the internet anyway, to be honest. Uh, you really shouldn't be setting up port forwarding so you can remotely manage your actual Home Assistant, for instance. But regardless, in this particular case, this actual account is only a local, you know, it only has local purposes anyway. I don't want that risk of somebody from the internet being able to log in to Home Assistant anyway. So this is a, a nice extra feature to have by enabling this. If somebody were to somehow um, get the ability to try and log in to Home Assistant over the internet, this option is an extra step uh, to try and prevent that from happening. So what we're going to do is click Create and then Create again. And then that creates our user account. So the next thing to do is to install the MQDT integration software. So we'll click on settings, then we'll go to devices and services. And as you can see, Home, uh, Home Assistant's already discovered this possible integration we might be interested in, MQDT. If it doesn't, what you can do is click on add integration. Uh, what it does, it brings up a list of known integrations and you can filter that out, for instance, and select MQDT from there. In our case, it's already discovered that as an option, so we're just going to click on Configure. 
Uh, then I'm going to click on Submit. Then I'm going to click on Finish. And that installs the integration software. But I don't want to use the, the built-in account uh, that it's trying to use. So I'm going to click on Configure. Then I'm going to click Reconfigure MQDT. Then down here where we've got the username, I'm going to replace that. And I'm going to use the account that I created earlier. I'm going to change the password as well. Now, we do have options for things like QoS. Uh, in a reliable network, so far I haven't really encountered any particular issues. Um, normally QoS is when there are problems, but in my case I haven't really experienced any issues to really justify using QoS yet. So at this stage I'm just leaving the settings as the defaults of uh, zero. So I'm going to click on Submit. Then I'm going to click on Finish. Then the last thing I'm going to do is go back to Settings, Add-ons. I'm going to select the Mosquito Broker because I want to restart this service. So I'll click Restart and that restarts it. So that, that basically gets all of the software installed that we need for Home Assistant. And then we can start using devices to connect into that MQTT Broker. Now, one last thing that I'd like to do is to create a separate user account for the actual devices that are going to connect to this broker. So to do that, we're going to go to settings, then to people, then we'll click on add person. So in this case, I'm going to call this one MQDT client, for example. We'll click on allow person to log in because they do need to be able to log in to Home Assistant. I'm just going to change that username and we'll provide it with a password. And I'll, I'm going to select this option, can only log in from the local network for the same reasons as before. So then we'll click create and then create again. So the idea is that whenever we set up a device that needs to talk to the MQDT broker, we'll be using the credentials from that account. Now, the best security practice is to actually have a completely separate username and password for every single device that's out there. But when we're talking about IoT devices, I think that's getting a bit impractical. So that's the reason I've got two accounts, one specifically for Home Assistant to be able to connect in and one's for the actual devices themselves. Now, if you're going to be using MQDT, then there is one piece of software that I would recommend you download and install. And that's this MQTT Explorer by Thomas Nordquist. So that's the URL, although I'll include it in the description as well. Uh, very easy to install and as you can see it supports quite a few different platforms so download the, the actual version that's suitable for your computer install that and then you'll be able to connect into the actual mqtt broker that we've created so i've already downloaded that for this linux computer so i'm just going to go to the application i've already set up a connection but you just basically click the plus sign here then you fill in the details so i've called this ha broker I've disabled the option to validate the certificate, which is enabled by default because the actual broker comes with its own self-signed certificate and we don't want to be trying to validate that because it's not going to work anyway. So unless you've changed that, then you do want to disable this feature. The protocol, it's set to MQDT by default, so I don't need to change that. In here where it's got host, I either give it the FQDN or the IP address, so it depends on you know what your network supports, whether you've got a DNS server or not. The port by default is set to 1883. I mean, there is an option for encryption, but like I was saying earlier, I know there are systems out there that don't support anyway, so I haven't enabled that option. And so I'm just going to stick with a normal and encrypted session on port 1883. Then we've got our username and password to log into the broker with. Now, I've actually created a completely different user account for this uh, demonstration. I just want to show how you can actually set up an actual client as an example. But I've had to create a separate account simply because this computer is a management computer and it's on a different network. And that means if I try to connect in as MQTT client, I'll get refused access because we're on a different network and that account does not allow connections from outside of the network. It's really intended for smart devices that are in the same network as Home Assistant, hence why it's refusing me access. So in this case, I've created this user account here. It doesn't have those same restrictions. So I can just click on connect and it'll then connect into the actual broker. Now, there isn't any devices here that are posting information, so I can't show that. But at least what I can show you is how to actually set up a device, the sort of information you need to give it. But in this case, it's just a, a simple walkthrough where it's kind of similar to Windows Explorer. 
uh, just like you would open up full uh, folders to get access into subfolders and dig deeper you just do the same here just clicking on these little arrows to find more and more information but the good thing about this is it's very very useful for troubleshooting but also finding information the sort of information the actual devices that are actually going to be posting to the broker so for example with es presence that posts information about the sort of devices that it discovers and you can find that information uh, from the broker so you don't necessarily have to connect into the actual um, base station itself you can get that through explorer for instance so very useful piece of software and that's why i recommend you do download and install it well thanks for making it to the end of this video i really do hope you found it useful if so then do click the like button and share as that'll help get the video out to more people who might find it useful as well if you've got any comments or suggestions, please post those in the comments section below. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more content like this, then yes, do subscribe. Just remember to set the bell icon to actually send you notifications when new content gets released. Although I also post to Twitter as well as Facebook. If you'd like to help the channel and support it, you can actually make contributions through PayPal and buy me a coffee. I've also got links to Patreon and there's also the join membership option for YouTube itself. Patreon and YouTube members do have the option to actually benefit from early access as well. But above all, many thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.